The offseason has already gotten off to quite a busy start. Taking a look at Pete's grades for free agency, giving the Falcons there with their new quarterback an A. We've seen a number of teams super active in free agency trying to position themselves for a big 2024 NFL season. Let's take a look at five NFL teams who are winners in free agency and five of the biggest losers. Winner, the Atlanta Falcons. After a frustrating 2023 campaign, the Atlanta Falcons came out firing in 2024 free agency. Not only did they say no to Bill Belichick as their new head coach, instead opting to hire Raheem Morris as the 19th head coach in team history, but they've also been very active filling some key holes on their roster. The most important acquisition is without a doubt the Kirk Cousins sign. If you watched the Falcons at all last year, then hey, credit to you for enduring one of the most frustrating teams that the league had to offer. Not only did their scheme completely limit the production of the their talented skill players, but so did the horrendous play under center, something that they're hoping Cousins will rectify. Sure, Kirk is one of the more controversial figures in the league, in the sense that his true value is a hotly debated subject amongst the talking heads in the media, but regardless of whether he's a top 10 QB or not, he is undeniably an improvement from what the Falcons have had at quarterback since parting ways with an aging Matt Ryan. Atlanta did well to fill some critical holes around him too, bringing in Darnell Mooney as wide receiver 2 across from Drake London, and fellow wideout Ray Ray McLeod was a low-cost burner option. This Falcons offense should look a whole lot different by the time the season rolls around. Loser, Denver Broncos. Granted, we all expected the Denver Broncos to be a little bit quiet this offseason, considering that they're up against it with the cap implications of parting ways with Russell Wilson, but still, this has been a tough look for the execs in the Mile High City. Beyond the quarterback position, they have really struggled to plug any of the holes that plagued them on the offensive side of the ball. Donning Matt Parrott on the offensive line after he flamed out with the New York Giants and adding receiver Josh Reynolds from Detroit as a substitute for the departed Jerry Judy does not inspire a lot of confidence. They're also rolling the dice on Brandon Jones at safety instead of paying Justin Simmons, which, uh, yeah, that is a big-time gamble. Denver is looking like a big-time loser thus far in free agency. Winner, Philadelphia Eagles. Granted, a lot of this prediction is contingent on the Eagles' star quarterback rounding into form after a tough finish to the 2023 season. But the Eagles have done well to navigate what could have been a super tumultuous offseason with the retirements of Jason Kelsey and Fletcher Cox, two linchpins in the organization's success over the years. The other loss that hurt was running back DeAndre Swift, who signed with the Chicago Bears. But Philly was quick to level up at the position by signing Saquon Barkley away from the rival Giants. The Eagles were also keen to bolster their defensive line, signing edge rusher Bryce Huff to a three-year deal after he recorded 10 sacks for the Jets in 2023, as well as their secondary by bringing CJ Garner Johnson back into the fold on a three-year contract. For sure, look for Philly to be back with a vengeance in 2024. Losers, New York Giants. The moves that the Mara family has made during 2024 free agency has not done much to inspire hope in a fan base that is desperate for all light at the end of the tunnel. That said, the trade acquisition of Brian Burns should be a big time win for New York, but we're talking strictly about free agency. And to us, New York missed the mark thus far. Signing True Lock isn't exactly going to solve their issues in the quarterback room. Kenasai McKenzie is a serviceable wide receiver, but not a great one. And the Giants are in dire need of a true number one option, not another third option. Credit to the Giants for trying to improve their O-line, which was a massive pain point in 2023, but we are not confident that the likes of Aaron Stinney and Austin Schlotman or heck, Matt Nelson are going to be moving the needle. All in all, a tough showing from the brass in New York thus far. Winners, Kansas City Chiefs. What's that saying? again. Uh, that's right, the rich get richer. Well, that is exactly what it looks like is happening in Kansas City as the back-to-back -back Super Bowl champs are already reloading the roster with fresh new talent to try and arm Patrick Mahomes with what he needs to achieve that elusive three-peat. In addition to securing the re-signing of the cornerstone of their defense, D-tackle Chris Jones and Drew Tranquil, they also added some much-needed depth on the offensive side of the ball. Kansas City inked Irv Smith Jr. away from the Cincinnati Bengals, who should add another talented option at tight end to help spell Travis Kelsey. And they were able to bring in former Cardinals wide receiver Marquise Brown at a discount, signing him to a two-year $14 million deal. Browns has had a 1,000-yard season and three 700-yard seasons across his career, and his down year in 2023 can surely be attributed to the chaos under center in the desert with Kyler Murray sidelined. So, look for Brown to emerge as a game-changer for Kansas City this season, as the Chiefs look like early winners in NFL free agency. 
losers. Dallas Cowboys. Would you believe it if I told you that another offseason came around and once again Jerry Jones has declared that the Dallas Cowboys are all in on winning the Super Bowl in 2024? That old timer is really starting to look like the boy who cried wolf in that regard. Because the Cowboys have done little to back that claim this far. They lost their starting running back in Tony Pollard and cornerstone of the row line in Tyron Smith. Tack McKinley is a nice player that should be serviceable on the defensive line, but he isn't a large enough threat to draw attention away from Micah Parsons, like maybe the move was intended to do. Admittedly, Dallas had its hands tied heading into this offseason as they ranked 27th in the league in salary cap space, which forced Jones and Co. to have a tight wallet. But that said, you can't run around claiming you're all in and that this is the year that Super Bowl glory is going to return to the Big D when you start a free agency like this. Winner, Tampa Bay Buccaneers. While the Tampa Bay Buccaneers have had a couple of high-profile departures with the likes of Shaq Barrett and Devin White leaving for the Miami Dolphins and Philadelphia Eagles respectively, they did retain the two keys to the engine on offense in quarterback Baker Mayfield, who proved to be a successful reclamation project last year, and more importantly, their franchise player, wide receiver Mike Evans, who surely had a ton of enticing offers to take his talents elsewhere. On the defensive side of the ball, they were able to retain safety Antoine Winfield Jr. with the franchise tag, and added depth to the secondary with the re-addition of Jordan Whitehead, who won a Super Bowl with Tampa in 2020 and then cashed in on a nice two-year with the Jets. Most importantly, Tampa Bay took significant measures to bolster their offensive line by signing Ben Bredesen and Sua Opeta, which should give Mayfield significantly more time to throw and help support the run game. Tampa Bay should be very competitive in the NFC South once again and might even be able to sneak a deep playoff run in if the other contenders in the NFC aren't careful. Losers, Carolina Panthers. The Carolina Panthers have not so quietly become one of the biggest dumpster fires in the NFL today. It starts at the very top of the organization with their still relatively new psycho owner David Tepper and the ripples of dysfunction have been trickling down through the hierarchy. The chaos that Tepper has brought to Charlotte has manifested in a number of toxic ways as we saw last season and the team's approach to the 2024 NFL free agency is absolutely no exception. I mean, never mind the decision to release safety Von Bell. Horrendous sell low play that they ran with one of their franchise players Brian Burns trading him for a fraction of the value that they should have gotten and realistically could have gotten last year when Tom of moving Burns first materialized. The moves that they made this offseason should spell big trouble for this franchise. Even the Panthers' winning first decisions that they made, like bringing in notable free agents and Jadavian Clowney, was highly questionable. Clowney is over a decade into his NFL career, and well, let's just say it is fairly well established that he isn't exactly a high motor kind of guy. I don't know what Carolina thinks it's gonna get out of him on a mercenary deal when the team is likely gonna be terrible. The Panthers also seem to opt out of bringing in high caliber replacements for any of the key players that departed this offseason, which strongly implies that the franchise will be entering yet another dreaded rebuilding phase. Yes, they have to rebuild through the draft, but man, this was a tough start to the offseason for Carolina. Winners, Green Bay Packers. After a shockingly solid late season push to the playoffs and a hilarious win over Dak Prescott, Mike McCarthy, and the rest of Jerry Jones' Dallas Cowboys in 2023-2024, Jordan Love and the Green Bay Packers have signaled that they see themselves as a legitimate contenders in the NFC. The most high-profile acquisition that they have made in free agency thus far was bringing in former Las Vegas Raiders All-Pro running back Josh Jacobs, who is just one year removed from leading the league in rushing to replace their longtime feature back Aaron Jones. It should be fascinating to see what kind of year that Jacobs has playing off Jordan Love, who has proven his ability to run a super effective play-action passing game thus far into his young career. The Green Bay Packers have made a couple of other significant moves in the 2024 NFL free agency, most notably bringing in safety Xavier McKinney to bolster their defensive backfield, which was a definite sore spot for them in an otherwise promising season last year. Losers, Pittsburgh Steelers. It's strange to see one of the NFL crown jewel franchises like the Pittsburgh Steelers are floundering around like they have been in the post-Ben Roethlisberger era. Their problem started with the reach for Kenny Pickett. The lack of stability at the quarterback position has really created issues that have left Pittsburgh straddling mediocrity. That said, the Steelers have managed to be very active thus far through 2024 NFL free agency, making several key acquisitions, in addition to some trades, most notably bringing in former Bears first-round pick Justin Fields into town to reshape the roster. The Fields move, however, was puzzling. Not just because they'll have to make a decision on his fifth-year option with a very limited sample size, but also because of 
with her other big acquisition, the signing of former Super Bowl winning quarterback Russell Wilson after his embarrassing flame out in Denver. Now, I don't know about you, but I see some serious locker room issues incoming in the Steel City, especially with Tomlin announcing that it is essentially Wilson's job to lose heading into the year. The rest of the Steelers' moves weren't quite as high risk as the Wilson signing, but they didn't exactly garner any excitement either. They brought in former Rams WR Van Jefferson, and they did at least re-sign DT Montrevious Adams and S. Miles Kilbrew, among a few others, in order to strengthen that inconsistent defense unit that they built around TJ Watt. But I think it's safe to say that the Steelers are losers at this point in the 2024 offseason. But which NFL team do you think has been a big winner in free agency so far? Who was the biggest losers? Was there anyone that we got wrong? Who do you think we got right? Who did we miss? <laughs> Let us know in the comment section below. If you like this video and learned a thing or two, clicking the like button helps out a ton. And hey, we appreciate it. If this is your first time coming around to TPS though, subscribing is a great idea because we put out videos like this every single day. But as always, thanks for watching and we'll see you guys next time.